Yeah, g'day, Joe. Um, it's, I guess, just under a week of training. How have you uh, found it? Are you, have you got a team in mind for next week? Um, have you got that far? No, uh, but I've loved it. Um, it's, it's, it's the bit of the job that I really enjoy, um, and I've enjoyed the enthusiasm of the, of the players. Um, you know, and you, you've always got to be a little bit optimistic, but I'm optimistic with the way they've come together. A good, good group of young men, I think. We've seen your selection, obviously. Can you give us an insight in how you want to play the game with the Wallabies? Um, you know, in this test, in the first test, and then beyond. Yeah, even in the broader selection, Pato, I think there's uh, a few different ways you can play. We've got some some different size blokes who are who are able to play the way that they best play. Um, we'd obviously like to be able to play with some tempo. Um, and I don't think that that will surprise anyone. Um, I, th I think it's the way that the, the players like to play the, the game, and um, and you want players to enjoy playing, and uh, that, that 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 would obviously be part of it. We obviously saw you achieve great success with Ireland, and they you built a, a particular style there. But it's not to say you will look to apply those same principles with Australia, or, or some of them, or none of them, or. Yeah, it's, it's all, everything's a hybrid, uh, tends to be. You know, last two years with the All Blacks, um, it, it was different again, uh, because you you just want to try to get the best out of your individual players in uh, some sort of collective game model that that, uh, that they're all invigorated by, but but also plays to their strengths as best it can. Um, and I'm still learning what those strengths are, Pato, so I'm not going to say that we've arrived at a way to play that's going to be successful because um, that, that, that's going to take a, well, one more week, hopefully, and then, um, then we can put something together next Saturday. Hey, Joe, I just wanted to get your thoughts on Tom Liner. I guess only one full season into his career and already into the mix here. Just can you walk us through what you saw of him throughout the season that's earned this chance and I guess being so young is he still a very much a genuine chance to get that 10 jumper or is it more of a long term exposure thing and then that tempo you spoke about wanting to play with maybe makes someone more experienced or like a Noah more likely for that job well you know I, I think Tom's got all the attributes and if you want to play with tempo it's always good to have a 10 who is A he's courageous he'll take the line on B he's got good foot speed See, he's a good. He's got a good passing game, and I, I really like his long kicking game for the size of him. He, he can put the ball down the field, which some of the time you need to be able to get some oxygen in and and, and find some grass, hopefully. So uh, he's got he's got the full spectrum there. Um, if you if you'd seen his tackle on uh, Lucan Salakai Lotto today, um, you know when when Lucan squared at, up and and went square at him, he, he doesn't lack luck for. Uh, lack for courage there, and uh, and he did a really good job of hanging in in the tackle. So um, that all those attributes, probably the the one thing for Tom uh, will be getting his confidence and and his ability to communicate and and make decisions and demand um, reactions from the players around him. And I guess with um, when it comes to club combinations coming into this environment as well. Like, you know, obviously haven't picked the team yet, but Hunter Besami at 12 Bears had an incredible year and him and Tommy had a really strong combination there. Do you look at pre-existing combinations heading into selection or is the test environment a bit too different to be able to judge it off that? Yeah, it's both those things. Um, definitely look at the cohesion that players may have, having played together before, but also trying to... Um, probably best prepare yourself with the best players who have some sort of um, best preparation for test arena. And, uh, and you're never gonna get that perfect because some people are gonna be making debuts at some stage and, and they're not necessarily best prepared, but that's part of our job is to, is to try to get them as ready as we can. I just wanted to ask about Timmy Ryan as well, because I know after his debut, you were asked about him in Sydney and spoke quite excitedly about what he can offer and then, I guess, had a really strong season, but still very young and not in the squad here. Was he close or was it a bit too early for someone like him to be thrown to this mix? 
Um, yeah, I met with Tim for 20 minutes, half an hour um, this week. Uh, so, you know, had a good conversation with Les Kiss around Tim as well and, and what's probably best for Tim at the moment. Um, yeah, it, it, massive breakout season, uh, but he's a, raw, he's a raw kid who is very lean and um, I, I, I just think if, I, I, would, I wouldn't be averse to bringing him into a squad at all. Um, I just think if there is a window, where we can get some physical development into him, just so he's 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 better prepared. Um, I, I think I think we're trying to make sure that we have got players who are prepared before they come in. A lot of his game sense and a lot of his natural instinctive play is, is fantastic to watch already. He doesn't like to score a try in the same way either, from what I've seen. And there's there's been a lot of them, so that must be exciting from your point of view. Yeah, yeah. He, he, there's a bit of rinse and repeat, which I like though, um, in that he, he uses speed to score. He, he comes from uh, long support lines to score. He goes up in the air over the top of other players to score. And um, he, he chases balls through to score. Um, so that, I, I think I, I showed Tim all those things um, on Tuesday evening when we were when we were chatting, so you know he's a guy that we're we're interested in, the, in for the future. And there's a number of players that you know haven't been named in the squad, but but we've met with and chatted to, and 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 probably just given a, a little bit of feedback to for the future. Hey Joe, um, it's your third international kind of job, um, and and you started with Ireland just over a decade ago. How much more prepared and, and how helpful is it having had the experience? And even though they're completely different systems, how, how much better prepared are you heading into a, a Wallabies head coaching role on the cusp of, you know, you only got them for 10 days or something before a test? Yeah. Oh, I've never been so unprepared, to be fair. Um, this is the, the one time I've got to meet all these players and... Uh, in, in those previous roles, I'd had three years with Leinster, and I knew uh, a greater proportion of that squad uh, before the the All Blacks. I had the Blues, and so um, yeah, it's it's a little bit daunting to be honest. Um, but if I wasn't nervous, uh, I don't think I'd be on the edge doing my job right. So I'm I'm happy to be nervous uh, because it just encourages me to to work a bit harder and engage a bit quicker and and a bit more often with um, with the players so that we can try to be on the same page. I, I, one thing I would say is I've got real confidence in our coaching group. Uh, Laurie ran a lot of today's session with the defence and um, you know, he's, he, he's a ball of energy and he's a catalyst for enthusiastic contribution and, um, and did a really good job of today's session. And uh, around the edges, the, the unit session yesterday, I love the way Mike Cron and, and Jeff Parling have combined to, to deliver um, and demand what they what they have from the from the big boys up front. And Owen Toolan is is just chipping away on some of the some of the skilled tidy ups we think that can make a difference for for our uh, our backs particularly. I'm sure you'll be able to answer this question better in a year or two or three years, but <laughs> Eddie, last year, late last year, um, on the stand documentary, at the end of the World Cup campaign, pulled James Slipper aside and he was caught talking about the fact that Wales is so much hardened uh, because of how long they could play their domestic seasons. Uh, and, and he was saying that Australian rugby players and the Wallabies weren't hard enough in terms of conditioning and test match ready. Do you feel like... From your early observations, where do you sit on on that kind of heading into your tenure with with Aussie rugby and the Wallabies? Yeah, I'm I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, Eddie had more time with them at that stage than I've had, so I don't know them as well. But um, I, as I said, I've been really um, impressed with the enthusiasm and, and the willingness to uh, take on ideas. I think there's a real growth mindset within the group, and um, and that's a very much a shared mindset so when you've got that um, I think it allows the ideas to be implemented um, but to actually then deliver them in, in the physical contest that test match footy is um, 
the next three weeks we'll, 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 we'll know more, I think. Yeah, hey Joe, um, obviously haven't named a, a captain yet. Um, are you going to wait right until team naming day to, to do so? And also, what have you seen from a leadership point of view in those four days so far? Yeah, we've got a we've got a real mix of of uh, leaders within the group, and um, what, what what I have seen has been um, has been really um, encouraging. You know, there's, there's guys who've got good experience, there's guys who lead by example, and there's guys who speak well. So, um, it, and I'm just getting to know them. So the the complication for me is is just um, first of all. I think it's easier to select that, that first captain once you've selected your team to make sure they're a starting player. And then from there, um, you know, I, I think you gauge how, how well they go. And, and we just progressed through this first three week block. Um, probably th th there'll, there'll be a, a little bit of movement in the side. I'm pretty sure that uh, we'll, we'll use more than just 15 of the same starters. So. There could be, uh, you know, a, a different captain for one or two of the tests, and that will, will also allow us to to just experiment a little bit. But you you can't you can't experiment too much when you when you've got a team like Wales coming because you know, and their leadership is strong with with guys like Dewey Lake and and Aaron Wainwright and Daffy Jenkins, um, Corey Hill coming back in there. They've got lots of experience. Um, with guys who lead, uh, so I, I think that in itself is a is a really good challenge for it for our boys to to demonstrate their self leadership and and um, and for the individual leaders to stand up. Got time for a couple more? Thanks, guys. With um, with Ireland, you had um, you drew heavily on that Leinster call for a long time, which was very very successful. Do you see an opportunity to do the same, something similar, maybe not to the same extent with the Brumbies contingent? Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really thought about it too much. Um, we're, we're pretty collective in, in how we selected and, and in what we've done so far. So uh, there hasn't been, there's been certainly nothing intentional about um, drawing heavily on one particular uh, group of players who play a certain way because I'm, I'm not sure, I, I know that there are things that we'll, we'll do differently from the Brumbies, but um, yeah, I, I think the comfort I had with, as you mentioned, Leinster, is that I'd actually just come out of coaching that, so a lot of the, the continuity of expectation was there, where um, you know, I really like some of the things that uh, Steve Larkin, Benny Moe and Rob Side do in the Brumbies, but, but you know, a, a, a lot of um, probably Brumby consistency comes, will come through uh, Laurie. Laurie Fisher because he, he's about as camber as you can get. Joe, um, sorry mate, I, my audio played up a bit for Pato's first question, so sorry if I'm going over the same topic. But what did you make of the Blues' as sort of power, sort of pick and go sort of success this year? Is that something you think the All Blacks um, and other international teams might employ? And is, is it a style that you're interested in for the Wallabies at all? Um, well, I, I coached a number of years with Vern Carter and um, you know VC he, he, he loves a little bit of the, the pick and go game and, and um, when we were coaching together in, in Bay of Plenty or Claremont um, you know it was, it was certainly part of the armoury that we had and we had some we had some very effective boys at doing it you know um, Tom and Domingo and, and Elvis and Mullen uh, Mario de Desma we had a we had a pack that were very adept at doing it um, and I think the Blues have got a pack that's very adept at doing it. Um, but it's not just their pack. You know, you get, you get Caleb Clark picking and going. He's so dynamic. He's quick. He's 108 athletic kilos. Uh, Mark Talia, you know, he's, he is so um, slippery in, in the way he can step and slide through. So they had, they had a, a confrontational style that was very dynamic. It wasn't like a slow pick and go or setting up pods to pick and go. It was just, it was very, very dynamic and hard to stop, wasn't it? Joe, just on that connection piece, uh, how important is it just not only building it within the sort of playing group, but to those that have worn the jersey before, noting guys like, you know, Todd Akafu, George Smith, James Hall, we've been in sort of camps being to the guys? 
Yeah, that was that was great yesterday uh, having those guys at lunch. You know, and, uh, I, I had quite a long chat with uh, George um, last time. I think I was with him. Uh, I, we were having cocktails in Limerick, which was, you know, just, I don't know what you're doing having cocktails in Limerick when there's when there's Guinness on on tap. But um, he he he's just got no ego, George. He's just so down to down to earth. Um, and it's the same with all those guys. Kev, I've, I've worked a fair bit with Kev um, in terms of coaching, and, and um, he, he's he, he's such a um, kind of a, a, a low level um, character in, in terms of no self promotion, n- no ego whatsoever, and um, you know Slacky and and um, and Paul McLean. Uh, I've had a a coffee with them every time I've been in, in Brisbane. They're, they're just great guys to talk about um, the connection piece around rugby. And James I don't know so well, so it was great to get him in and, and meet him. Um, he's a big lad, I would say that. Um, yeah, I, I, I did ask him if he's available, but he, I think he's retired. Last one, thanks guys. Can I maybe awesome. finish, Joe, with um, your thoughts on Wales? They had a pretty unhappy Six Nations and then they were beaten by the Springboks again. Uh, at the weekend, they named a squad. Just your overall thoughts. They'll be pretty desperate, like you, I suppose, to get you know the the train back on the road. Yeah, I I think Wales will be super tough. Um, you know, they lost fourteen twelve to a really good England side. The, the French game, it looks like quite a big score, but if you watch that game, up to the sixtieth minute, that's anyone's game. Um, you know, so I know scores didn't work out for them, and they and they lost to Italy. But um, the the Italian game, they you know that was so nip and tuck right till the finish. So sometimes coming out on the wrong side of the scoreboard doesn't reflect how tight the game was. And so uh, there's obviously the the recent history of the forty points to six that they put on the Wallabies last time they played them. That will give them the confidence that if they feel they can put their game together, they'll get some guys back in from that uh, South African game, um, and and that will strengthen their side, I think. And um, you know, it's a bit like that with the South African game as well. They 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 struggled early. They got an early yellow card, and yet they were still only a point down at half time. So they just don't know how to go away, Wales. They they are very combative.